Well, Eve ate of the apple, and she didn't fall over dead. Adam ate of the apple, and he didn't fall over dead. But you see, God was talking about a spiritual death. Because God had created Adam and Eve to live throughout all ages with him. And so when he said, ye shall surely die, ye shall die spiritually. Eternal separation from God was the death that Adam had that day. The moment he took the bite of the fruit, he died spiritually. Because he was eternally separated from God from that point on. Which meant when he could never go to be with God again. Walking in the cool of the evening. Walking in the garden. He could never be in the presence of God again. Because sin abounded in his life. And God could not associate himself with sin. So eventually down the road. We know that Cain slew Abel. We know that evil abounded in the world. And God cursed the world. He cursed it because they had gone against his word. He gave Moses a lot of commandments, laws, of how man could live to, to be righteous. Told him what he had to do to become righteous. And the Old Testament, you had to abide by those laws all the way to the very end. That when you drew your last breath, you had to have everything fulfilled. You had to right, offer the right sacrifices and everything. And if a man died without sin in his life, following all the laws, he died righteous. And at the moment of death, at the moment of death, his soul left the body. And his soul went to Abraham's bosom, which is a compartment in hell called paradise. Back then, every righteous soul went into paradise. Every evil soul went into shoal or hell. Now, there's five compartments down in hell, five departments in hell that most people don't know anything about. But there are five different places mentioned in the Bible about in hell where people can go. Shoal, which is hell, the torment chamber. If you die a sinner, you go there and you are tormented until you're brought out of Shoal or that particular part of hell. And then you're judged at the great white throne judgment. Then you're cast into the lake of fire which is the second place. You've got the lake of fire, uh, which is a compartment in hell. And then you have Tartarus or Tartarus. Tartarus is what I call it, is a place where the fallen angels are. Then you have paradise or Abraham's bosom where the righteous were held until Jesus Christ came to set them free. And uh, okay, then we've got another one. <laughs> we've got, uh, I've got it written down here. You've got bottomless pit. You've got the bottomless pit where Satan is going to be bound for a thousand years during Christ's reign here on earth. And that's where the demonic spirits and the devils, uh, devilish spirits are held now in the bottomless pit. I knew there were five compartments. And, but the thing about it that I want to cover real briefly, and I, my time is running out, is the fact that Christ had to be born. God had to separate. He had to come and pay a price. He gave the man law. He gave men laws. Men couldn't live righteous. And even if they lived righteous, Satan still had their souls bound in, the, in paradise, in Abraham's bosom. And we can learn all of this in Luke chapter 16, if you, don't, if you don't know, understand what I'm saying. But if you died wicked, you went straight to hell. If you died righteous, your soul still was held captive in paradise, Abraham's bosom. And so God said, the only way that we're going to be able to set them free is I've got to send a redeemer. I've got to send someone. I, we've got to set them free. With, uh, somebody's got to live a sinless life. And so Jesus, his only begotten son, he sent Jesus down to die on Calvary, uh, he, to live a sinless life, and then to make the ultimate sacrifice because the blood had to be shed for the remission of sin. So Christ became that sacrifice and a lot of people don't understand where I'm going with this, but Christ had to be born before he could be sacrificed. And that's why we celebrate Christmas is because God so loved us. In John three sixteen. a lot of people don't understand that scripture. But God looked down, and he looked down through the years, and he saw that mankind couldn't make it without a Redeemer. And he looked in hell to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all of the, David, all of those men that died righteous were still being held. 
in captivity. They, their souls couldn't come up to heaven to be with him. Satan still had his hand on them. So he let Jesus come down, live a perfect life, and Jesus went to the cross, died a sinless man. He shed his blood so that you and I could have eternal life. And when he gave up the ghost on the cross, he went down into the pits of hell. He went down in the pits of hell. And he went to paradise, and for three days he preached to the saints in paradise. The Bible tells us that. He preached to them, and Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all of the righteous dead had to accept him as the Messiah. They had to accept him as the Redeemer, just as you and I have to accept him. And then he went to Satan, and he took the keys for the gates of hell away from Satan. And in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 8, 9, 10, it talks about how Christ brought captivity out of paradise. He led captivity captive out of paradise, and he took them up to be with God. Then he came back and talked to the disciples. And today he's your Savior, he's my Savior. There's no way to make it to heaven except through and by Jesus Christ. And right now, if you're bound by sin, if you have sin in your life, you need to call upon the name of the Lord. You need to ask God to forgive you. I'm going to say a simple sinner's prayer real quickly. And if I, I want you to repeat this prayer with me. Father God, I come before you today. I have sin in my life. And I'm asking you, Father, to forgive my sins. Place them under the blood of Jesus. For I believe in my heart and I'm confessing with my mouth that Jesus is the Son of God and that you raised him from the dead. This moment, I invite Jesus Christ to come into my heart to be my Savior, to be Lord of my life. And I'm asking you, Father, to write my name in the Lamb's book of life and seal me with the Holy Ghost of promise until the day of redemption. For I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you said that prayer and you meant it in your heart, if you meant it in your heart, God just heard you. He's forgiven you of your sins. He's written your name in the Lamb's book of life. And you're now his child, but you need to live for him. But getting back to Christmas, this is a time of year that we celebrate the fact that God loved us so much that he gave the greatest gift that he could, his only begotten son. Jesus loved us so much that he gave the greatest gift that he could. He gave his own life that you and I could have life. It's not about Santa Claus and flying reindeer and everything. It's all about Jesus. I want you to pray for this ministry always. Support us when you can. Remember that Jesus is the answer around the world. God bless you. Praise the name of the Lord. I hope you enjoyed the program today. And from the staff here at David Bobby Ministries and from Crossroads Community Church, we'd like to tell every one of you, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Merry Christmas.